The coach Eddie Robinson Jr. era has begun over at Alabama State, leaving many wondering exactly what they were going to come out and do in this game against Howard University. Well, you already know, Coach Scott has high expectations of that Howard University football team looking to bounce back and get things moving in the right direction that he has let us all know that Howard is on the rise and they're going to do some phenomenal things. But guys, let me tell you, this game was a game of a team that missed out on opportunities to go ahead and get the win for the day. Like I said, sometimes you got to A, you got to execute when you have that opportunity. And when you don't, it's costly. We're going to get into it right after this. You know it's your favorite coach back at it again. Ten toes down, about to tell you how it all went down. This is Tomorrow Leader Sports Network with your host, Coach Walker. If you're new to the channel, please like, share, subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you can get all upcoming videos. For all my leaders out there, welcome back. Y'all know the drill. Y'all know the routine. If you haven't done so already, please like, comment, and share these videos. And tap in the free to tell them to come on in. It's not the positive vibes. We're just having a good time talking about HBCU sports. And don't forget, you can follow us on all social media platforms. The links are listed down below in the description. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and tap on in this thing and get straight to it. Because I'm really like, Coach, what you got going on? What's your thoughts on the game as far as everything that took place yesterday? Well, guys, I ain't going to tell you no tell. I was definitely there. I was in the booth. I was watching everything from up above, getting the bird's eye view as far as everything that was going on. And I'm going to tell you right now, lights, camera, action, QB1 Davis for Alabama State. He say it's on, and it's time to go ahead and get this game rocking and rolling. And I can't tell you no tales, but the atmosphere was on point. I mean, it was above and beyond what many would have thought it was going to be, especially with the, you know, with the two teams that was coming into Atlanta to play. You know, you had Howard University versus Alabama State. And which I think there was like a little over 21, 22,000 fans in attendance. So I got to say, hey, congratulations on that. But definitely the week zero game was the game that everybody was anticipating on seeing because we have been waiting on football for God knows how long now. Everybody was just so agitated, like, come on, come on. We got to get this thing going. I mean, I, I definitely got the opportunity to meet Miss Green from ESPN back uh, in the tunnel while I was coming through to go up to the booth. Phenomenal. She's a phenomenal person. I thank you again, Miss Green, for giving me a few minutes of your time. Thank you. Um, but looking at Howard University coming to Atlanta, let, letting everybody know who the real HUA. Howard got some serious fans here in this city that says they are the real HU, and they wanted to make sure when Howard University left Atlanta, we all knew who the real HU was. But you know what? I'm going to tell you this now. QB Davis for Alabama State was making sure that he wasn't having none of that. That young man has not been out there on the field, touched the football in over the past two years. And when I tell you, the young man got out there and got after it. That young man, I think he threw for 167 yards yesterday. Uh, I believe he had one touchdown and one interception and a fumble as well. And which, you know, Howard University had the opportunity to take advantage of those miscues. Not to mention the punt, the block punt that they had out there on the field that had them in great field position in which they could not put any points on the board. Like I said, they would normally, they would either get three points or they would end up giving the ball back to Alabama State in which they took advantage of the miscues, moving that ball down the field, putting more points on the board. Now, I got to say this. The um, Howard University has an offensive lineman, number 77, Anin Dankawa. That young man is the truth. You hear me? He wouldn't have, listen, you line up in the three technique, you line up in the five technique, that young man was putting his hands all over folks, letting them know, hey, listen, <laughs> forget it. You, Hey, you might want to spread out a little bit wider for you to try to get back here. And even then, you still weren't getting back there in the backfield to disrupt anything. Now, I will tell you this. Alabama State was able to go ahead and bring more pressure into the box where they were getting, you know, like they say math. You know, if you got five on five, it's even. But when you got five on seven, five on eight, that's a whole different ball game. And guess what? If you can't account for those athletes that's coming across that line of scrimmage, you're going to have all type of different problems going on in which they were able to shake up quarterback Williams in the game, causing him to have a couple of miscues out there in which uh, Alabama, excuse me, in which Howard was actually up 3-0 during a drive back down the field. After they, had, after they had Alabama State punt the ball, having them go three and out, Williams, unfortunately, threw an interception to Alabama State in which they were able to get their feet up underneath them and begin to drive the ball and get comfortable in that game, letting everybody know, hey, listen, 
okay, we find ourselves now. We're good to go. We're here to play. Now we're going to come in here and give you the business. And that's exactly what they did. Alabama State has a running core of earth, wind, and fire, which is Corey Merritt, Jawan Howell, and Santo Dunn called Earth, Wind, and Fire. And Earth, Wind, and Fire got out there, and they rushed for over 100 yards combined in the game, in, in which they kept Alabama State, kept they kept that offense pretty pretty even as far as we're moving the ball up and down the field. I think a couple of times, um, Davis, QB1 Davis for Alabama State, he got a little bit, you know, out of sorts where he wanted to make a play instead of just taking what the defense was giving to him. He ended up costing, you know, costing the team by throwing an interception and fumbling the ball. But as I stated before, Howard was unable to put points on the board to bring them a little bit closer in the game. And as Alabama State continued to get more and more comfortable in the game, they were able to put additional points up on the board. But I got to tell you this, though. Um, there were several records that were set in this game. Alabama State set a record, uh, a me, excuse me, a MEAC SWAT record of 99 yards in which they were able to drive the ball down the field on Howard University for a 99-yard touchdown score. Things are going to be so crazy with this team this upcoming season. I don't know if Coach uh, Robinson is going to go with the multi-quarterback setup as he did last night, or if they're going to go back and forth with a little bit of wildcat. Even up front for um, for Howard University, they got some ballers over there as well on that defensive side of the ball because Rockenberg and Brown, number 42, that was just disrupting everything coming off those edges. And... I'm going to tell you right now, they only got, they only sacked Davis twice. They should have got him a couple more times of that. But the young man is so elusive in the pocket. He kept people from, you know, sizing him up to where they were able to make that tackle on him. I mean, heck, one time somebody came off the edge, I mean, clean. And when this young man spun up out that bad boy, took off, I'm just sitting there looking like, man, if you don't find a way to close this young man in to keep him in the middle of the field, it's going to be a problem. Not to mention, so many times the defense, they did not, uh, account for uh, Ja'Cory Merritt, in which he would slide out the backfield, and that was uh, QB1 Davis. That was his safety net where he needed to dump the ball off to somebody. Merritt was that guy getting the ball going down the field. But you got to give credit to Chenault as well as number 84, Isaiah Scott, who Scott did catch the touchdown pass. He was also another safety blanket for Davis out there on the field when Davis was being hurried up to make a play backed in the backfield when he was, you know, throwing the ball. When he was backed in the pocket, looking for a receiver to throw the ball to, Isaiah Scott found a way to get open. So these young men came out there looking the ball in this game. And not to mention, I got to see none other than uh, Colton Adams out there playing as well. It was good to see number one out there being that energizer buddy, that leader out there on the Hornets defense, getting the team ready and prepared to get out. Howard University got some things going with Williams throwing the ball in which he was able to find uh, number eight, Antoine Murray and Richie LaRaza, who LaRaza also set a MEAC SWAC challenge uh, record as well with seven, inter excuse me, with seven receptions. He actually tied that list with a couple of other receivers. Looking at this game, as I stated before, if Howard would have continued to kept run, if Howard would have kept running that ball, I think this game would have been a lot closer than what was anticipated. When Williams threw that interception and Maddox picked that ball off for Alabama State number 14, that let me know right there, like thing that they're beginning to get to him. One thing I got, one thing for certain I would say is this. Howard was Howard got seven yards on first down running the ball. They averaged 4.1, 4.3 yards per carry in the game. I did not understand why they didn't run the ball a little bit more. I mean, you got two backs back there in the backfield, number two and number 27 that was just putting in that work. I mean, they excuse me, they averaged 4.3 yards per carry and uh 4.3 yards per carry, and Alabama State had 3.7. When you got number two, Jared Hunter, and number 27, um, Jared Hunter and Ian Willer, Ian Wheeler back there giving folks the business, you're supposed to keep running that ball. And for the life of me, I don't understand why they stopped. Matter of fact, Howard had an opportunity where they were able to, they were about to Hunter's score. Nia touched the ground around the five-yard line, and they got the rush in plays. It was almost as if they were just out of sync. And I didn't understand why Coach Scott didn't call a timeout at that time to gather everybody to get them together so that they can get, you know, put seven points on the board. That seven points would have made that game a heck of a lot different than the putting up three. But that was kind of like how the game was throughout where, you know, the offense, you know, 
They didn't, they, they didn't get settled enough so that they can go ahead and move the ball down the field. They moved the ball down the field early on in the game, but as the game went on, they, you know, it's like they, they got a little bit, they got more and more out of sync. So definitely this was a game of opportunities that could have been, you know, one team took advantage of the opportunities while the other team didn't. But a hey, congratulations to Coach Eddie Robinson Jr. on his first uh, win as the Alabama State Hornets football coach. Congratulations to QB1 Davis over at Alabama State for coming out there, putting on a show for the team and getting them in order. Also, congratulations to Earth, Wind, and Fire, the running back, the running back core over there at Alabama State. They came in and showed out. And Miles Crowley on that 61-yard bomb that he put out there on the field, that thing was beautiful. I, I And I, that's why I keep talking about it. I, I love seeing players come in there and make plays at times when you're not even expecting them to hit the field. This young man had an opportunity to get out there on the field and play, and he took advantage of it. So salute to him as well. Congratulations to Alabama State and Howard University on getting through all of the rain delays, even though the game that was even though the game was called with two minutes and 13 seconds left to go in the fourth quarter. I got to give salute to both teams for going out there and giving a hard-fought effort in this game. Alabama State is headed to play UCLA next week, while Howard University is playing none other than Hampton U to find out who is the real HU. Guys, congratulations to both teams. Week zero is in the books. Now we're going to find out exactly what's going to take place this upcoming week with all of the football that's going to go on from the FAMU issue as far as with the students that are considered ineligible. How many of those are actually going to be available to play in the game this upcoming week against Jackson State, not to mention the injuries that took place in that game as well. So it's going to be a lot that we're going to unpack, especially with the games that's going on. Uh, for this up week from the CIAA, the SIAC, the MEAC, and the SWAC. So, guys, y'all make sure y'all tune in, tap in, tell a friend, tell a friend of a friend to come on in because Coach Walker about to bring it to you once again. And remember, be the one and lead.